Hey guys, welcome back to uh, to Free Game. Your host Luke Jirasi, co-host Jeremy Todd, and today we got the special guest Michael Burke. He's a sound healer, hosts poetry nights, um, all types of trippy shit, guys. This is going to be awesome. We're going to start off with um, with some sound healing, and then after that, we're going to get into the normal podcast. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably either keep we'll probably have one where it's all home, one where it's chopped up. But um, for those of you, this is the first time viewing it we've ever done a live. Um, I just figured it'd be kind of cool to get your day started with, with some sound healing. I have no idea how this is going to work, but we were just talking about this releases DMT naturally in the brain. <laughs> Sacred text, uh, the the, wor- the world always starts with the word, and, and just kind of Mike was just dropping knowledge on some of that before we even uh, got on the air. Right, we're, we're ready to go, brother. Yeah, so we're going to experience a sound journey, what I call a sound journey, although many of the places where I do it, uh, at, at centers like treatment centers, uh, they call it sound therapy. Just because I think sound journey is a little too druggy or trippy sounding to, for a therapy center. But I'm basically doing the same thing out in public as I am in a lot of the private work I do. I'm taking you on a journey through the power of sound and we are all vibrating, everything vibrates. We are actually made of music, so. example is to play sound to bring us to a balance of all frequencies what we would call harmony what sometimes you would call resonance if we can get into a divine resonance within our system through the power of sound then of course what happens is the body starts to release these chemicals that are just amazing and they're within us we don't need drugs from outside of us to bring that about the chemicals are already within us and sound can stimulate what we call the feel-good chemicals oxytocin so forth and possibly even DMT is released from the pineal gland if we lower the brainwave state enough through the power of sound bring about a sense of peace calm and clarity within us what I call the spiritual core where we're always at peace within us that place when you tap into it chemicals start to release that really bathe us in what I would call the beauty of life it's our natural state and we hear our own song and many of us maybe have never heard that song since We were in the womb where you definitely would hear it. You're taking care of, you're fed, everything's bathing you in this beautiful bliss. And that's your own song. You hear music at that point, but you're really not aware because there's no labels. You don't have to call it music. You don't have to label it anything. We get born and we're brought into this space and told this is that, that's that. All kind of shit, all kind of labels. Don't need it. So this is a chance for us to drop out and tune in to the vibrations that make us. I think these sounds were all of us before we were any of us. So we're gonna go on a sound journey. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Um, Guys that are watching live, um, we were told the visuals don't really matter, just close your eyes, that's why I know the camera work on this is kinda set up weird. For the normal podcast, we'll have the normal angles, but um, if you guys are watching, just close your eyes and turn the volume up. Yeah, it's very conducive to closing your eyes. We hear with much more than our ears, so when you close your eyes, it allows each string cell and fiber of you to actually hear sound because it's a process. So as you step into that realm with eyes open, you, you, you tend to say, what is that sound? How's he doing that? Or how's that sound being made? Doesn't make any difference. Close your eyes, open your heart and free your mind. Let's go on a sound journey through the power of sound. During this time, we shall release what no longer serves us. And we shall renew and refresh all that does. We're going to do this through the power of sound. Right here, right now. The only time there truly is. We release all that no longer as we tune up the temple.
adrift on these waves of sound. Responsible for what we hold in our minds, not for what passes through. If it no longer serves you, allow it to pass through. Right now. Right here. The power of sound.
take a breath, we are given a breath. It is a gift. What we do with that breath out, well, that's our gift in return. I choose love. jungles of our minds. Let each sound caress you like a raindrop falling inside of you. 
let me lose myself in true forgetfulness, but wholly release me from the errors of my perception.
release our past concerns as we cancel our past concerns with others right here. Let me lose myself in true forgetfulness, but wholly release me from the errors of my perception.
silence for a moment. Silence where all sound exists. And maybe you still hear some music. That's the song of your cells. We are made of music. That was trippy. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I had, had me the phone. I, I think it. I think it went off during it. But so that's what I call a sound journey. <clears throat> now imagine an hour of that. I usually take people in a room, and it's all like-minded individuals coming for sound, laid out with the same energy. They all drift away, and at some point, there's only one of us in the room because everyone becomes this mass of connection, vibration. You can't separate one from the other. So. We are this deeply connected matter that we, we consider ourselves a godzillion different points of light, but we're one. And this just proved it. We bring in an hour of sound. Please come out and join us at one of our events. It's, it's very good for the soul. Like most things these days, if you unplug for an hour and plug back in, something seems to have reset. Something is tuned up while you exit the system and allow what I call the temple to tune up because we're just so busy with the fucking monkey mind and everything else that when we unplug for an hour, the body goes, oh, thank you for not thinking for an hour, just allowing. This is when allowance and surrender become incredible strengths. They're not weaknesses. When we unplug and tune in to the all, the oneness that we are, beautiful things happen within us and that's what we would consider instantaneous healing because some people are like oh I just I felt great nothing hurt like of course we have that ability more power than we could ever imagine there's um so sight is the most dominant sense but um when we sleep the only sense that doesn't turn off is sound yes uh so I, I don't know what oh. that means but but that has to mean something <laughs> it has to mean something it has to yeah. mean something right like if, if the body is evolutionary like you know program the way it is um and uh, obviously i think we'd all say we believe in a creator an architect or sure. god or whatever anybody wants to call it the fact that you know sight's the most dominant is important the fact that sound never turns off is, is pretty important to it it must have a major importance in our unfolding as uh, evolutionary creatures so we go from that sympathetic to the parasympathetic system and uh, if we were awake during dreams we'd move and shake and, and be involved in it so it unplugs us but we still experience it so very much happens in the sound journey where many people have come to me for sleep problems they don't sleep well I, i'm very blessed that i sleep well but i have friends who don't so sleep highly important we wouldn't do it eight hours a day out of our lives but wasn't important so right, people that don't third sleep of our well life. yeah it's um it's important for them so they'll come to my sound and catch up they really feel they've slept four to six hours in the one hour i play because i can unplug the system and bathe the 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 brain and so forth in such energy that it thinks it rested it thinks it slept so that's the power we have and i'm honored to do it and help people and i just wish everyone had a good night's sleep you so know, it's so important one of, man one of my good friends uh my buddy christian he just he has a, a fucked up life um for, for most of his life i mean he's he's good now you know he's like boxing and all that other stuff but he said he always had like these terrible nightmares and like night terrors and, and all that shit for uh 
for a very long period of time. He said recently he's been sleeping with like 432 hertz. Sure. The different frequencies. Yeah. I have to assume you're familiar with um, the different frequencies. And, and yes. why does that work that way? Well, I'm not really sure. I, I, I'm not a big fan of separating one frequency from the other, but 432 seems to work. I think mostly because, um, oh, pre-World War One, there was kind of an agenda where they, uh, there's, I don't know if this is true or not, there's mythical tales that 440 hertz where a lot of modern music is tuned to has a mind control capability. So 432 is a freeing sense. It's more of a... Uh, absolute uh, frequency that allows people to be their own. Which My girl got me one of those little metal tuners where uh, she hits it and then like, you know what I mean? Do, yeah. yeah, and it, it creates like a peace and like a, a healing. It does. Some people call it the love tone. There's a little whistle out now that you can blow and it's 432. It's just a good frequency for our, if we're made of frequency and we're made of music, we're made of sound, then it makes sense that certain frequencies would tune up because this ease is just your body not at ease out of harmony so when it's out of frequency alignment let's call divine alignment i like to call it then that's why i consider it birth um at birth you're this divine divinely aligned being that is popped out into a world that is going to tell you what everything is but you already know it you're already there and you're perfectly tuned so you kind of go out of tune as you live so this is a way to tune yourself back up and certain frequencies can do that it just makes sense to me as a vibrational sound therapist that if something's out of tune, I don't want to give it medicine or a drug or anything else. I want to bring the frequency back into harmony. And what's with, the difference between frequency and resonance? That's an interesting question. Um, I think resonance just applies to me personally when something is in resonance with energies around it, like you would be in resonance with a, uh, a healthy energetic flow a frequency would just be isolating a certain aspect of that and saying this is out of tune this frequency brings it into resonance but i think this a uh, gray area where it might swim together in a in a sense of some people might use it interchangeably saying frequency when they mean resonance saying resonance when they mean frequency once again it's terms I, that, I think uh, that's the lost um, in the term i think that's the key to, to crack in the matrix so to speak yeah is the uh is resonating with whatever the universal resonance is. Um, sure. I think Earth's is considered the Schumann's resonance. Schumann resonance, yeah. Um, <laughs> She's been crazy lately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Jeremy's been with me a couple times where, like, um, sometimes I'm on psychedelic, sometimes I'm not. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, it's a fair warning. Uh, so, but when I get in these meditative states or these super coherent states, I don't necessarily always know how I get there, but I know like I feel it. And then my, my synesthesia kicks in and like, he'll tell you like electronics will freak out around me. And, sure. Like, the TVs will change. Um, a bunch of friends that have seen stuff like that. Um, the trippiest one to me that, that made, I mean, the only way I can make sense is again, I forgot my gold teeth, but like usually the, I'm big on the electromagnetic, like, you know, frequencies and, and, and resonance. Um, I've had points where friends could hear my thoughts. It's happened more than once. Nice. So my only thing I could think of was I got so coherent that the the waves were interpreted. Because from my understanding is, I read a book called, um, I must never read, This Is Your Brain on Sound. It's a dope book. Nice. Um, but they're talking about how, technically speaking, sound's not real, but it's still like one of the realest things. So it, I, do, you know, do you know what I'm talking about? I do, but I think... That's probably a uh, terrible explanation I just gave. It's not terrible. No, it's uh, it's more of a psychedelic interpretation, <laughs> which makes sense. Uh, no, I think uh, personally sound to me is, is real, but sometimes the silence, it's what I call deepening the silence. It's like when you go walking in the woods and you go out there to reach silence. It's not silent. There's wind rustling through the leaves. There's animals. You hear all kind of stuff, but the silence is deepened. You, you listen more intently. You hear differently than in the city somewhere with all stuff going on. It's a great movie called August Rush where uh, he hears everything as music, like the trucks going by, horn bonking. It turns into a song, everything, and that's how his mind works. That's how I think we all are, but we're kind of dumbed down through living and people saying that's not real, don't do that, and so forth. But we are basically 
alive to sound and sound once again i think silence is probably the most powerful sound but it might be that you're hearing nothing but so many things are being affected by the vibrations you don't actually have to hear it like some things i play you hear but when I hold a bowl and play it, I feel the sound in my hand long before I ever hear it. So I know there's vibration. I would call it sound, but my ears can't pick it up. So that's a very that, that's the way the book describes area. it. Yeah, it's actually it's like, a very scientific book. How do you describe sound if you can't hear it? Well, <laughs> it's still sound. Right. Yeah. So that's why I'm a fan of uh, hallucinogenics myself. I can hear things that maybe. I think I'm seeing or feeling, or I could touch something, but I hear it, but I might say I touch it, but it doesn't mean touch. It's like when, I, when people say, when you say you heard that, I go, well, I, it more woke up inside of me. I didn't actually hear it like you would be talking to someone and hear a word. It woke up inside me as a truth. And how would you know truth unless it was first inside you? Like I know truth because it resonates in right, your my intuition. heart and my soul, right. and I go, that feels like truth. So. And that's today, you know, I could actually make a completely different statement tomorrow, and that's truth as well. That's right. relative. That, that's oh. I'm kind of fascinated by the mystery. My friend Bob Simon wrote a song and said, I, 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 hold the, uh, I hold the mystery closer than I hold any belief. And I really love that line because it resonated with truth in me. I go, boy, I'm, like, what do you mean the mystery? The mystery, the things I don't understand right. are where I find the greatest faith. <laughs> right, right. And so it's that beautiful dichotomy of, of life. Um, have you ever heard of, of cymatics? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, I just literally was watching a documentary. Yeah, on Visible other, Sound. Yeah, it's yeah. The cool, that's the coolest thing. Anybody that, that's unfamiliar with it, um, there's a documentary on Amazon Prime called The Magic of Sound or Sound Magic or, yeah. or something like that. And what that is is... So it's literally like what Michael was saying to start this before he played the beautiful sound therapy. Um, everything has like a natural shape that comes from its sound. So like they'll have these tables, right? Or like metal plates yeah. and they'll put like yeah. rice on it. And if they hit whatever, then that frequency creates a star. Yeah. And if they hit something else, then that frequency creates like uh hexagons and it was so true yeah. <laughs> like, all shapes yeah yeah, yeah. It, it creates these beautiful naturally yeah. geometric patterns again for psychedelics it brings you the oh, same, totally. same things you see it's oh, like yeah. uh the visuals you would see at an old grateful dead concert you yeah know, yeah like, how do they get that on the screen well that's just sound interpreted in, in a visual sense yeah i started really sound therapy through mandara cromwell who taught me about cymatics she has a wonderful book out called sound flower and, uh, I'm going to check that out. Soundflower? Yeah, Soundflower. Yeah, it's all about cymatics. And um, she studied, I think, with um, Hans Jenny, who one of the first ones. I think they call it a clotney plate, too, that metal plate you're talking about where you play the edge with, like, a violin bow. Yeah, yeah, that's... A uh, bow, and it'll shape sand or powder mm -hmm. into... And it shows you that this mass of confusion can be shaped by sound. So we're made of sound. Literally, everything is made of sound, which at first was the word, and the word right. was aum, or whatever you want to say the word was, but that shaped matter. And from that, of course, we said, well, I'm going to give it labels and break it into categories and all of that. It's just sound. Right, right. It's, yeah. it's so... Cymatics uh, fascinating. It's very such, fascinating. It's a, yeah, yeah. I, and it yeah. starts to make... Like, it'll make a, a figure and a shape, but if you... It's another friend of mine called, uh, um, oh, his name's John, uh, forget his name, but uh, John Stewart Reed um, does some fascinating, he invented a machine that he can create cymatic images and take pictures of it. Now he's doing studies on how it shapes. He's studying different organs in the body and what they look like in perfect uh, resonance when, when they're in tune and then shaping, like I think, uh, it was stated by uh, Edgar Casey that all healing in the future will be done with sound. I really believe that. So John Stuart Reed is doing some work saying that this is a very good, like, liver cell. This is what it looks like. So if we can get the other cells that supposedly are diseased to shape that shape, then they will come into harmony with the rest. So this is a whole new field oh. that's just fascinating. So it makes perfect sense. If we're made of sound, why wouldn't I'm going to go to the doctor and he's going to go, like, I always envisioned I'd have a place called um, something vibration, maybe uh, vibrations, and it'd be a place on every corner where if you felt out of sync, 
just like a Starbucks. You walk in and get a coffee, you'd walk into vibration and go, man, my left shoulder's hurt me a little. I, go, I got a frequency for that. Zip. <laughs> and a minute later, you walk out and go, man, I got a me with a, you know, a 17 hertz. It did it, yeah. And then, oh, my neck's feeling bad. Is that a, is that a, is that a 432 hertz thing? <laughs> yeah. And you treat yourself with sound and the side effects, all positive. It makes wow. you feel good. There's no... You know, oh, and this will kill your liver, and this you could get side effects from. No, because really there's no side effects. They're just effects, you know. Fuck side effects. Be like, right. don't do side effects. That's an effect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah. a side effect. Yeah, it might fix this, but it fucked up that. So <laughs> frequency, I think, music in the future. I really think healing will be done with sound, and there's some doctors now killing cancer cells, doing different treatments with, with sonic blast of so how sound. do you kill something with sound? Don't know. They're getting in with like micro frequency into a section of a cell and zapping it with the frequency that's like guess, the antithesis of it. Yeah, and it goes zip, gone. Cancels out. Yeah. Is there opposite? Kind there's waves amazing. that cancel each other out, right? Yeah, there would be. So, so I don't know enough about it to speak clearly on it, but I, I've done enough. Uh, studying and reading and different friends send me things where I go, oh, that's absolutely fascinating. I see it as an unfolding wave of intelligence and new medicine because ah, the medicine we have is kind of fucked up. Yeah, I mean, th <laughs> think of this, right? It's not, so help, it's not helping people, making them sick. So we want you to get better. We want dis-ease to become ease and go away. I think we can do that through sound. And I've seen it happen from what I do. Some people... They go, I just feel better after an hour of your stuff. There you go. That's a good start. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then it's and then it's keeping yourself away from the incoherent exactly Keep frequencies of your tune. life. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I had a friend um, went through rehab and, and stuff like that. He was into prescriptions, and he works in like a really toxic place, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, Luke, well, I'm, I'm meditating and stuff. He, like, calls me and, like, asks me for, like, mental advice and stuff like that all the time. I'm like, bro, you meditate for, probably, like, 20 minutes an hour, but you spend eight hours in a snake pit? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. The balance. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. you're, you're still losing seven, you know what I mean? Like, eight minus one is seven. Like, yeah. it's negative seven every day. Um, so, exactly. I mean, that, that that's definitely something that I think people are going to start to get more, con hopefully get more conscious of. Um, and my, my girl was telling us the other day, I didn't know. That. I actually haven't double checked it, but um, the sound therapy with bowls and water is illegal in Japan right now. Yeah, I did hear her saying that at poetry the other night. Um, uh, it probably because it's taking away money from big pharma. Yeah, right. Yeah, I felt yeah. a little fucked up after that. Uh, yeah, For like ten minutes in, in a good minutes. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, in a good way. Yeah, I was just kind of like, I don't feel like talking right no, now. No, I've had yeah. many people. I had uh, one of the shamans that taught me a couple of the chants I do, and then I just kind of went off in a different direction I asked him about chanting he goes it's what we would call soul songs in my language Mike you can you can do the chant I taught you but if it starts to drift into other things then you're just chanting you're, you're doing a soul song if that's what's coming through then it's resonating out of your heart coming through your throat most powerful voice I mean, most powerful instrument I play is my voice so it sounded native when you were doing yeah, it yeah totally yeah, totally and he said man if you go one drop of native blood native American blood in you then you're native American so you probably have more than that, Mike, so just keep chanting. I just checked with him because I didn't want to bastardize anybody's language or, or violate any any beliefs. And he goes, no, no, if it's coming through you that way, that's the way you do it. And a little bit of what I say is, is Aramaic, which I don't know either, but a friend taught me a little and found out that the Aramaic and the Lakota, very similar alphabets, very similar so it makes well, sense that's, that i do that's it that's trippy yeah. Yeah, yeah that would have been the language you would have heard jesus yeah. speak if you'd have been hanging out with jesus and i had great visions of jesus when i started doing this of laughing joking hanging around playing music with his friends because you know i grew up catholic and got over Me that too. but uh it was very much focused on the last section of his life which was kind of miserable and uh the irony of it all <laughs> is is the simple jesus all the beautiful things he does yeah what we symbolize him with is like his worst part yeah and i'm, I'm sure i'm, I'm, I'm sure jesus would be way. like yo that's the part that's what you chose <laughs> like that, you that's that, 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 that's where you guys that's betrayed you me when you walk in the building are you kidding because the first time i went to unity where i run a sacred sound ministry they had a picture of jesus laughing on the altar and i went I'd never seen a picture of Jesus laughing. Go, of course he's laughing. And he would hang out and 
have fun with his friends and you know he was just a cool cat i th i think yeah. there's uh i never thought about it but i had major dreams and got into sound and thought oh he's speaking to me through sound through vibration there's no doubt about it and it wasn't to celebrate his death we're celebrating his life yeah yeah, yeah. i love the picture of jesus laughing it was yeah, so cool yeah. Do you know what's yeah. interesting about that? Um, Cornell, West, I think it's Cornell West, is, was saying um, he studied, you know, philosophy, and, and Cornell West is pretty religious. Sure. Um, he was talking about how there's no actual thing of Jesus laughing, and nothing of Socrates crying. Wow. And he was like, our two biggest philosophers in the Western didn't <laughs> yeah. didn't partake in the in the two most yeah. important They're emotions. Stoic. <laughs> yeah, you know shit. Um, I'm sure they got high I'm, I'm sure. behind the dumpster. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Water to wine, baby. Yeah. So, um, Jeez, come here. the the word fruit uh, can be interpreted in Hebrew as mushroom. Nice. So, fruit of knowledge. What would make a little more sense? Totally. And what grows everywhere? You know what I mean? Um, and also, like when it says like uh, baptized with Jesus in the holy smoke, I forget what verse that is. Yeah. Um, in the language, smoke was also interchangeable with incense, which at the time was salvia and marijuana. Nice. Um, it's called a weed because it grows everywhere. So to think that they wouldn't partake in something like that or go in a desert for 40 oh, days totally. and 40 nights without. They have mana, and I, how do they go 40 years wandering around? Something and, gave them nutrient. And yeah, yeah. It was, uh, and I think, sacred, the sacred bush. mushrooms, sacred plants, uh, what the, what the universe put here for us to use as... I don't even like to call it medicine. It's just really life. It's earth, it's, it's yeah. how we, we bathe ourselves. We don't need pharmaceuticals. We need Mother Earth. Yeah. Um, the so why most of my chanting is honoring Mother Earth and, and the whales. And yeah. yeah. It's Gaia. just the song yeah. keeps us together. That sound. Are you familiar with, um, I forget the name of the bush that they think the burning bush was? Uh, Soma? Um that might be acacia? it. Acacia? Yeah. Acacia. They think that's the burning bush because that's native yeah, in that area. Yesterday. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so the, the burning bush, the, the acacia, if, I, um, if that's what I'm thinking of, that's, yeah, that produces more energy. natural DMT than any yes. other plant. Yeah, and it amazing. often catches on fire. Yeah. So they were saying that Moses realistically probably did see a burning bush and did hear. I mean, I've talked to God in DMT. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's actually to me Definitely. when he appeared the to me. God molecule, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And came down with a list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm not sure about that, but I think he did experience some kind of hallucinogenic. And if you really read the Bible deeply and go back to the Aramaic interpretation of it, like Dale Allen Hoffman's interpretation of the Aramaic uh, scripture. It's very uh, hallucinogenic based. It's, it seems like they took all of that out and made it very sane and simple. And they go, no, we can't let people know that they can reach this on their own through. Right, well, then they lose uh, the power. I mean, the Council yeah, of Nicaea totally. took out all those different books. Yes. Um, a lot of that was the Gnostic books. Yes. So the Gnostics consider themselves the, um, the original Christians. And they would say that the modern day Christians, like the literal Christians, would actually be the, the devil. Or the, the devil's devil, worshippers, yeah. and not, not like maliciously. They they've been tricked, the same way like the devil's greatest trick is convincing people. Yes. Um, it and exists. and yeah, the exactly. Gnostics, what the Gnostics say, um, whether you believe Jesus was real or not is irrelevant. The point of it is the allegory, and it's like the Gospel of Thomas that was taken out of the Council of Nicaea, where it's like, the whole point of it is, Jesus says it throughout the whole thing. He's like, what I do, you can do too. You yes. just have to unlock and it. more. Right, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. He's like, you just Crazy. have to unlock it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, I, I'm all about that. I, I've recently been looking into a bunch of different Gnostic texts, uh, and then I bought a bunch of Kabbalah books, or, and then Sufi books. So I want to just kind of... Yes. Get, get, and, and what I noticed, the more I'm reading, I'm finishing up the Bhagavad Gita now. He, <laughs> he remembers this story. Again, so I've had a lot of um, really cool synchronicities. Um so a year ago in around February, one of my friends uh, is a master mason. He's also a high level priest um, and does magic um, and all that. Right. So I was telling him like, hey, man, like all these crazy things happen. And whenever I'm in like a super like intense or life or death situation, like a voice will come and like I'll, I'll hear like these things. Right. Or like things will like literally happen. Right. And it's oh, well, it sounds like you have a powerful spirit, like guardian angel. You should ask it to reveal itself and like show me this meditation to do it. So it's completely sober this one time 
Um, I'm walking up the st- I, I just want to throw that out because I've been talking about psychedelics a lot. Caveat. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's, it's important that, that I wasn't on anything. Was I know he wasn't. He, yeah. was, he was not this time. So, not this time. No, no, no. I'm trying, I have no problem admitting when I am. Um, so I'm walking up the stairs and I feel the energy. And I was like, all right, you know, my guardian spirit, please reveal yourself. And I was like, I'm ready. You know, please reveal yourself. And this lion with snake hair appears in front of me. I'm completely sober. Wow. A fucking jet. Like, I, I <laughs> run into my room. <laughs> because I was like, I was not ready. I was not, holy shit. I thought I was ready. I was not ready. And, I, and then, like, I have this weird feeling of, like, that was Jesus. And I was like, all right, Jesus is terrifying. Um, but that's cool. That's the good guy. What do the bad guys look like? Mm-hmm. Holy Christ. Right? Um, fast Dang. forward eight months. Yeah, like, literally, holy Christ, right? Um, fast forward, like, eight months. I had told my girl the story. And she became friends with this MMA fighter in the UFC, uh, Mashka... Sorry, Mashka, I forget your last name. Um, but anyways, Mashka has become a devout Hindu and goes to this Hindu temple. And when she's there, she she essentially resonates with the divine protector called Narasimha and shows Daniela a pic, like a, a thing of it, and it's a lion with snake hair. I've never seen anything. I've never seen anything with Hindu in my life. So Dan, at, at this crazy. point, at this point, that's crazy. So Danielle, it's good. Uh, yeah. So Danielle asked for the bag. We Facetime that night. Um, cause she hadn't moved up here yet. So when we FaceTime, she wanted to see if it was like the same thing or if I was just pulling her chain. So she pulled the bag out and like, I kind of just, you know, put it across like the screen. I was like, holy shit, that's the thing. That's, that's the saw. thing. And she was wow. like, that's what I thought. That's not our semen. Da, da, da. <laughs> a week later, I'm in the airport and a Hindu monk comes up to me and gives me the Bhagavad Gita and goes, you're supposed to learn. Nice. <laughs> he, he, can, he was living with me when it happened. Divine synchronicity. Yeah. Baby. And I was just there like, it is. Whoa, all right. I got, got to look into this. Uh, it is. Wow. Yeah, so that was that was something that um, uh, I'm in the process of reading that now. I would uh, call that being in tune. So you're, in, you're, you're definitely in, in a conscious flow of allowing the universe to bathe you in these synchronicities, which is always all around us. Many of us just miss it. You know, we're not, we're not aware or in tune with, like, well, how long has that been going on? All oh, your life. <laughs> Many of us don't see it or before hear it and after, or deny it. Like most people have that inner voice, that beautiful listening to their heart ability, but will deny that information almost as soon as they hear it. They go, well, "What did your What did your whole energy tell you to do? Oh, to do that? Did you do that? No, no, I thought that was bad advice. Really? Or like when the energy will give me a a, a beautiful thing to write or to play. And I don't question, I just do it now, but I've come to that. I used to question it going, why would I question an unlimited source that just gave me information? I go, wait, I got a better idea. <laughs> really? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? So it looked at me long enough, I went, okay, I'm gonna knock you on the head. Like they call it a spiritual two by four, right? Like right. you're gonna have to start listening to this, Mike, because we're feeding you information constantly. Stop not listening. It's about opening up, becoming awake and aware, and and I think that's when uh, that's when my poetry took on a new level because it just it was allowing it to come through. Like I didn't publish some of it, but my publisher said you're only sending me certain things, and and this touched me deeply because she goes, you know, what about everything else you write? I go, well, I just I just don't know what it is. She goes, well, some of it's not meant for you. And I said, oh. I almost started crying. Wow, I didn't think of that. She goes, yeah, it's so universally open to someone how are they going to get it unless you put it out there so then i started sending her everything and of course the things they chose to publish were much different than what i would have chosen because i only understood some of it and i went i'm not sure what that is she goes because it's not for you that's a great publisher that helped me yeah very good publisher it helped me wake up to another level i went okay i've been blocking a lot of stuff and that, that in itself helped me open and reminded me, bringing me back to cymatics, that energy that keeps kept spreading was making these new forms that I had blocked out of the picture, but it was always there. I just only saw this, but it had all of this. And it starts to make actually, some cymatic images will actually start to form 3D structures. So you know everything is based on sound. It started Wait, so with the create, word, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So some Crazy cymatics good. can create uh, physical structure? Yes. Yeah. Like you, atoms? You, you, well, it'll, uh, you, know be interesting? you see it start dancing. Like it looks like a, a shape comes up and starts moving. So how does that do that with just sound? Now they're shaping water. 
And like water, so undervalued, water is full of knowledge, power, and wisdom, but oh, it's just water. Oh, no. That's why we're 70% water. water. Something going on with water. It's not, in, it's not uh, just this simple liquid. And I think now they even discovered a fourth state of water. So, you know, the things we don't know are amazing. But what water would the carries state knowledge. Of water be? That would be, that's probably the fourth state of matter. I don't know, some kind of plasma thing. Don't know. Look it up. Yeah, it is. You know, it's weird as sound doesn't travel in space. No. You can't, it can't be heard. It can't be heard. That's just how weird. Before, Amazing. The in the great, you But know, it travels the vast wonderful emptiness. in water, so it makes sense that the sound baths, I do, they used to call them sound baths, and now I call it a sound journey. But uh, it's affecting all the water in our system, so no wonder you feel good, because sound travels through water amazingly well, and... Maybe that's why Japan outlawed that shit, you know? Because I have some friends who put, like, these bowls will float in water. Even though they're heavy bowls, they'll float. And when you tap them, oh, cymatic wow. images come off in the pool, wherever that's you have cool. the bowl, and you're in that. So imagine you getting bathed not only in the sound, but in the actual physical touch of the wave. That's so wild. Because the sound's going through us in the... Yeah, through us, as us, in us, within us. Just, there's no separating one from the other. And that's, uh, it's just remarkable. I'm, I've been a sound therapist for about 12 years and still learn with every breath. So when we think in words, how do you think that would separate or be connected to words? Because, right, so there, there's another, kind of go back to the scriptures. Um, in the Bible it says, never curse a deaf man, right? The reason is not because the deaf man is because the words you're saying are cursing yourself. Um, you had, you said something when we were doing it. It's like, you don't worry about the thoughts that come and go. Worry about the thoughts you hold on to or something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, we're not responsible for the, uh, we are not responsible for, we, we are responsible for the thoughts we hold in our mind, not for the thoughts that pass through. Because one thing I can do with sound therapy is allow, I say we release what no longer serves us, but sometimes people get very attached to meaning and structure like well how do how do I know what it is I think understanding is overrated it's just craziness that you have to try and understand it if it's something that's not serving you your being knows that and let it pass through and the sound waves can actually allow it to pass through what you're supposed to hold on to you'll know from the essence of of your heart it's why I think that's why the heart chakra is in the center because when the heart is balanced it helps balance the three below and the three above there's a beautiful thing about the heart the heart sends probably 5,000 times more information yeah. to the brain than the brain sends to the heart it's the, the heart has a lot to do with everything and then our gut is where a lot of our chemicals that that, that create us so uh, our bathing and and sound can actually release all of that so I'm, I'm not sure about the uh the the, the uh, cursing affecting things, uh, curse of the deaf man, that's interesting. But also once, I think they asked uh, Pater Mahansi Yogananda, how should I treat others? And he said, there are no others. <laughs> Great answer. Huh? Damn. And yeah, how do you act with that? So if everyone's me, then I'm going to treat them like me. That's why loving yourself becomes the basis of everything. If you don't really love yourself, of course you're going to, treat other people like shit but if it truly loved this being this this heart this being that i am and everyone else is that then i'm going to treat them just the same or better yeah it's very interesting it is very interesting um i'm i, I keep focusing on the cymatics now and how <laughs> sound creates structure and, yeah. and physical so i'm wondering how our thoughts and the words we speak affect our actual and probably the words we hear affect our physical uh manifestation right i wonder if somebody only spoke nice or coherent or beautiful or, or resonant words if that would affect happen, their yeah. physical i think they, so. they might be more attractive right and somebody has resting bitch face i wonder if they're thinking shitty things <laughs> oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah yeah you know well, what i mean good point. Also, but the, but just the thought itself has uh, a thing you know so i don't know if you have to speak it the energy that you create thought with that you if you're thinking it so I'm wondering, speak I, it aloud is what one the thing, difference between thought and sound is. It might be the same thing. It might be that you know, just like uh, some sounds I play, you can't hear. They're still affecting us. And cymatics in a pool is a perfect proof of that. It's like I can't hear that bowl, but I see the energy coming off of it. So if I'm thinking something, but I didn't speak it aloud to you, 
it probably still has an effect because the waves of that thought energy are moving out and affecting the field around me. So it's probably affecting so you. So are, are thoughts electromagnetic from the brain yes. and then transferred they're, to sound they're e through our vocal waves. cords? Yeah, I think it's a, it's hard to separate one from the other. They're yeah. both. Yeah, so you could measure it in many different ways, but they're everything. It has It has a wave of reality that we could measure but there's also imagine what's going on that we don't have instruments to measure like right we don't know that it did that well ever we ever since my friends that. Go, oh it's always done that no it just started doing it bullshit it's always done it we just didn't know how to measure it right yeah ever since my friends heard, heard me thinking on more than yeah. one occasion i was in the same resonated state nice. it's, it's affected my whole view on on it and i was like huh i like it i wonder like you know i wonder how much and how sometimes like when I get in that that the electronics react to me and my only thing I can think of is almost like when you press a button on a remote control it sends out a resonating frequency yeah. Yeah, so exactly. our thoughts must be shooting out through like third eye who knows or whatever part of the body maybe the whole thing maybe the heart because the heart shoots out the most yeah amazing um, electronic field coming yeah. out of the heart heart math institute one yeah, yeah, yeah. looking to is just fascinating the studies they've done and every day coming out with we didn't even know that, you know, and I was fascinated what they discovered 10 years ago. What they're discovering these days is amazing. Have you noticed a difference in how you feel when you put the sound bowl in the water instead of hearing it, feeling it, so to speak? Uh, a little a little bit. Um, but once again, it comes down to my belief that I, I, I think the sound bowl, like I used to take a bath and I'd put a bowl in the tub with me and I'd just let it float around. I'd tap it and just closed my eyes, lay back, and let it float around. And I felt it was generating, let's call it uh, sacred essence in the water. I felt like my bath water had become more blessed or, or more for some reason. It just felt, I said, oh, this bath is better than the one that didn't have the bowl. But once again, that comes into a judgment thing. I don't know if I'm judging it. Always good water, but when I put the bowl in it, Either I way, the effect is something. real. Yeah. Right. Yeah, placebo or not, the effect is real. Yeah, yeah. Um, that got me thinking about when people. And if I believe it's real, that's it. And that kind of that inner conversation is our most important one. Like if you're having these terrible thoughts about yourself, that's really fucking up the system. Yeah, you know. So real. you have to be. Like I used to have a lady that uh, one lady taught me some stuff about energy. Said uh, I would joke sometimes about things, and she would go, "Don't even say that. Cancel that. Cancel that. That thought doesn't know if it's a reality or if you're joking." So. You just sent a, a bad wave of energy into your system. And I didn't get it at first, but after a while I felt her and I went, oh, I should only really state things that resonate with truth and joy and beauty within me and not even joke about that. But we kind of grew up in New Orleans, you know, ragging <laughs> one another. And yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was funny. So I thought, well, humor is good. And she goes, yeah, but if it's a negative thing, that negative stuff has power. It will, it will vibrate energy in a negative way. And I, interesting very interesting when I, when you were just talking i was thinking i'm only going to speak positive and <laughs> i felt a negative um aspect so I'm, I'm very in tune with my my sensations yeah so i think that there has to be some negative for the balance right the same way with the world right all life so. has to eat life to stay alive well i think that's why i was born a libra i have to be i have to stay in <laughs> balance <laughs> yeah totally yeah. like uh, i don't know if any of that's true or not true but i find balance is, is the most fabulous thing when i'm really like over positive some people like you just crazy with the positive shit mike cut it out <laughs> yeah and then they, you know like it pisses some people off They're like why are you so happy and laughing so really does that make you angry <laughs> that makes me confused <laughs> because I, I don't know why that would piss you off but yeah they do i just can't take someone as happy as you crazy but that energy i go that's some kind of balance being brought to me by the universe it can't be a bad thing it's a, it's just a thing so after a while i just stop labeling anything i go it's just a thing they go thoughts are things you watch what you think i go well i do but i think there's a balance to it all it's good it's bad it's right it's wrong i, I think i wrote a poem about it at one point where i said there really is stop with the judgment and the labeling it's just I think divine order is never out of order. So when we interpret it as being out of order, we're probably creating a, a, a negative impact on whatever is happening because we're judging it instead of just allowing it. But that's, uh, that's a very Buddhist way to live and a very 
very uh, cosmic uh, consciousness. And sometimes in the world we live in and doing business or booking a job, whatever, you have to actually think and act like a human. <laughs> 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 yeah, some people are like, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't deal with you right now, Mike. We need some kind of definite answer. <laughs> yes or no? I'd like to say something about that. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yes or no? Okay, whatever. <laughs> I, I, rec- I recently just read a, a book called uh, Super Forecasters. Nice. Um, as I, I kind of changed my role in my, my career, I'm more of a... Um, well, how would you describe my role now? I, I'm the <laughs> boss. How would you describe his role? He's a, a head coach. Yeah. So, like, before I was, like, the best player on the team, like the salesman, right? Nice. So I was like, and then now I'm the builder or the coach. Yeah. Kind of like. Nice. da 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 So one of my best traits is, is I can usually read people and trends and place people where they're going to be most successful. But I wanted to get even nice. better at that, right? So I read a book called Super Forecasters as – we have something called a dialer, like we're calling people for like selling them insurance, right? Sure. And I wanted to see if I could find out about like predicting and, and trends. And um, anybody hasn't read the book Super Forecasters, phenomenal by Philip Tetlock. Uh, but what he says is, the most accurate people are actually people that don't ever give definite answers. Nice. Because he's like he's like nothing is ever definite. He's like just because you yeah. say that nine eleven is going to happen, we Not say with sure. absolute certainty doesn't mean you were right. And somebody said it wasn't going to happen. If they said it wasn't going to happen at a 30% or 70%, they might have still been right, right? Because it's all probability. Sure. Um, so that's kind of interesting that you said, like, the definite. And, and I'm somebody that's always like, well, because I literally, before I make any decision, they'll, they'll tell you, like, every big decision I make, I'm, I'm super, I'm fortunate, I'm logical, um, but I go off of intuition. Yeah. So, like, I'll use logic. And then I'll, if my intuition tells me something completely different, I'll still go with my intuition. Use your brain and your heart. Yeah. So I think that's exactly where I'm at, and I seem to function very well, and it works well for me. And, and my career has brought me to a, a, something I do for a living that is very open to interpretation. No one really is sure what I'm doing at the places that hire me, which is kind of funny. But <laughs> Like us today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they go, it was something about it. It made me feel better, and our clients like it, and the – the energy feels better in the building so we like what you did but we're not exactly sure what you did kind of perfect because then i can do whatever i want and i'm not sure what i'm doing so, I yeah. you, you're it, not sure it fits in perfect with me yeah. yeah and i couldn't do this every day of my life and I, I play sound almost every day of my life somewhere doing for someone there's no way i could do it if it was the same thing every time like playing here today i'm just not sure what sounds these bowls and the gong and the drum are going to make because it acts with energy in a room, temperature, uh, my the way I touch it, what I invite the sound out with, all different. So it's constantly different. Each day is like a, a beautiful um, uh, acid trip. Really. No wonder you're so happy. Yeah, yeah very much <laughs> no, so. No yeah. you're so happy. And I really man. enjoyed that Hearing growing up moment. in New Orleans and experimenting, but we did it mostly as entertainment and, and weren't really – you know, trying to go deep into our souls and, and get lessons and, and, and learn about life. But now I do it as a way to feed my soul. My soul goes, this is good for you. It's good for you to step into the zone. And I can bring other people with me. And I love to bring them on a journey. And then when I take them out, many have these revelations or they talk to me. Can I talk to you for a minute? I go, yes, please. But I like the centers where I work because some have major revelations and it's good to have trained therapists that work at all these centers that can help them they're like and that that person had major breakthrough during your sound and they talked with us the rest of the day about it so it goes hand in hand it's a beautiful thing i'm blessed i get to do this for a living and they they pay me it's just crazy. it's incredible my, my living example if you do what you love and the money will come because this is what i love and all of a sudden they give me a job with initials after my name it's craziness <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, like you're an official VST. Okay. <laughs> yeah. like, do you have a license? I go, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> do I need one? <laughs> because I'm probably going to get out of the business if I need a license <laughs> to do it. Yeah, yeah. doesn't make any sense. Just be hired on the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Mike was in at the beginning. Now, now you need licensing. Yeah, I got out of it. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> the government got involved. 
it, it went straight downhill. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I t- some people tell me that they go, man, you make me feel so good, Mike. That I think they're gonna outlaw it at some point. You they know? did in Japan. Sorry, you can't do that. Yeah. Why? Because you you actually just made people feel better with sound, and they didn't need anything else. Amazing. Right. Yeah. They don't. They don't need a, a repeat prescription. Nope. Three times a day. And that's we had, we had mentioned it just a minute at poetry when I met you. Um, some of the treatment centers are, have now authorized psilocybin and MDMA and different hallucinogenics to treat alcoholism, depression, and it's working. So one or two treatments, boom. So they don't need a lifelong. You're going to be in therapy the rest of your life. No, you don't. We can fix you. In that's one not or good two. for business, though. Yeah. If you have to be in therapy the rest of your life. They're not trying the to fix it. The therapy's not working. It's not working. Yeah, it's not. It's <laughs> something's not right, right? But if they could take one, what I would call a soft journey, and see the clarity within them that's always been there, why wouldn't you use that as a medicine? Why is it illegal? I, I'm a big proponent of using what the earth gave us. Same here. Same, Same here. I'm not a blessing. Despite all my my pro psychedelic talk. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan. I mean, I don't really judge people that do stuff, but um, I don't like, I don't really, I don't get down at all with prescriptions no. um, or the what people call hard drugs or anything like that. No. The hardest thing I do is alcohol, which is terrible. <laughs> yeah. I do it quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> that, that being said. Um, and then other than that, you probably would take you some time and send me the email. Yeah, yeah. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I was not responsible this weekend. <laughs> that was a funny <laughs> message. I oh, know I like him even more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was supposed to send Mike an email with the questions, and I was Didn't just like, do anything, yeah. "Sorry, dude, I wasn't responsible." Sorry, I was not responsible. Yeah. Huh? It's another. I'm, I'm not a bullshitter. Another, another feather in your cap. As far as I'm concerned, I'm like, I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. not. I'm not a bullshitter. I told you that. Don't count on me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll fit in my group very well. <laughs> He's like, oh, my best friend. I can't count on him, but I love him. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's honest, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, don't tell me you're going to be there because you might not be. I might not be. Okay. That's honest. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, man. That's funny. Um, yeah, so I met Mike. I don't know if I told you. I went to, uh, I don't even know where we were going. Um, Danielle and I were just, my girl and I just randomly, I like walking. So this. Jeremy became my co-host. I, I had a, a vision of, maybe not vision, I had a feeling of this podcast coming to me two years ago. And it was like, um, I wanted to learn and have free, objective conversations with interesting, intelligent people that are that are masters of their craft or their field. Nice. And the whole concept was like the allegory of the cave. Uh, i probably talk about this in every episode, but whatever. Yeah. Um, it's... Are you familiar with the algorithm of the cave? But I am. Okay, it, everything is a shadow. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, base your life around it. It's like none of it right. was real. Right. <laughs> it's so, all an illusion. <laughs> exactly. So my, my life whole, exactly. <laughs> my my whole thing was how do you show people the light without them wanting to end you? And I was so like I I, I juggled with that for years after hearing it, and I was like, oh, you have to put the fire in the peripheral, and when they're ready, then they'll come to it. But if you bring it to them. Everybody has to be their own savior, right? Yep. So the point of this show is who knows when it will get big, but I know it will. And people will find it when they're ready. And I'm going to have so many episodes and all these different things. And it's just going to be people like you. Uh, we just had C. Joe. Oh, um, we had Di- Diamond Sheik. Um, we had Kevin. We, we had Rock. We have all these different interesting people, nice. right, that are just experts in their field and doing their own things. And that's what we want to do with this. And as soon as I talked to you, it's like, this dude gets it. <laughs> like, uh, that's why. I, yeah, I literally we met Friday and I'm on a show Tuesday. Yeah, so we, ju- we just met him Friday night. Yeah. Um, it's a poetry. Yeah, and I heard your poetry too. And I said, well, I, I like him. I like your uh, I like your poetry. So the, the depth of your thinking was beautiful. And I thought, well, there must be a pretty cool podcast. Yeah, the, the one the one that I did was called Out of the Cave. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, the, the Out of the Cave there. It was a good gathering. That was. was Where was it at? It's a place called Phoenix and Dragon, Phoenix and Dragon Bookstore in Roswell, um, right inside the loop on Roswell Road. I host a poetry night there the second Friday of every month, 7 to 9, and we just gather poets, artists. uh, Sometimes we get people singing or or, 
um, writing a, uh, reading from a section of a book they might read, they might have written a prose. It's not necessarily poetry. We just encourage people to come share in the creative ability. Nice. And Candace, who owns the place, usually has a different artist there every month in one of the rooms that local artists that she promotes and just lets their work speak for itself for a month. And we've been doing that probably 15 years, and just so many. So many people will come in and go, well, I'm not a poet, I, I just want to listen. And within a few months, they're reading, and they're going, oh, this, don't ever say you're not a poet again, because you are. Right. And that's one of the statements we talk about, don't speak, I'm not a poet, yes, you are. Don't tell yourself that, because you're the only one who believed that. Everybody else said, man, that guy's an amazing poet, or that girl's an amazing poet. And one of the ways to find that out is to come share and to do it. Because, like my publisher said, some of the stuff you write is not meant for you. Do you want to? Do you want to read? Uh, I can read a piece. Yeah, read a piece. That's cool. I'm excited. Let's do. Uh, we'll do. And folks listening, this is uh, "Dancing with the Divine" by Michael Burke. If you want to order the book, "Dancing with the Divine." Yeah, we'll do the first poem in the book called "The Echo of Light." I only know one way to shine, so I shine ever so bright. I am the vibration of sound, yes, I am the echo of light. I am born in the breath of beginning, and I bathe in stillness that's spinning. I can be nowhere else, and nowhere else can be me. I am image and reflection, I am death and resurrection. I am the age that I am because of the age of the plan. I am not a moment too soon. I am the earth, the sun, and the moon. I am less a constellation and more its creation. I am the moment that's expressed. I am the bless in all that's blessed. I am the touch of God's finger. I am the moment of linger. I am neither yet or before, neither water nor shore, for in the Almighty's eye, I am not even I. I am the truth of a miracle, I am fluid and lyrical. I am the song I am to be through the art of harmony. Know that grace is the sound and Christ's consciousness is the key. I lock into worship and worship frees me to see that I am the moment before the moment is me. And I shine, yes I shine ever so bright. I am the sound of sight, yes I, I am the echo of light. That was awesome man, yeah. that was really powerful. Thank you. Yeah, that was awesome. So it's a book of uh, spiritual poetry, what I would call um, mystical poetry it it opens to you as you open to it each poem seems to take on a new meaning for someone else that reads it and it means something to them because it's uh it's a piece of them already that is coming to life and like you said they come to your show when they're ready they come to the book when they're ready i've had many yoga studios and healing centers that just open it we just open it and read a piece of it from a poem during one of our classes because the yoga classes I like are very soft, um, kind of yin yoga, and it's very much a mind, body, spirit, stretching and doing some yoga, but it's about tapping into my mind and my heart and my soul. And sometimes the words they read are powerful. And to have my book uh, being read at some of those places, that's why I wrote it. I, I put 51 poems in it because I figured they could read something once a week. And then I'd give everybody a week off. <laughs> <laughs> Read whatever Dude, the fuck you want. <laughs> Dude, you need to do uh, voiceovers, man. Yeah, I, I had some work. Yeah, it's yeah. a tough, uh, it's a tough uh, gig to yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, you got you super know? sultry there. It's <laughs> no, awesome, dude. Yeah, wait a moment. I, I, I thought you were going to uh, start like, talking like, about lions yeah, or something. I was like, I'm in. Can you just follow me around or like leave a message and wake me up? Good morning. Yeah, I got uh, I got actually got signed to one agency, but uh, I've done a few uh, demos for them and uh, read for different things, but I've never gotten a, a job doing it yet. But I get that quite a bit because I do a 
meditation service, experiential service every Wednesday night with Reverend Richard over at Unity North, and I read my poetry or read other things, but uh, every week somebody would call, man, you should do voiceover. Your voice is incredible. And when I perform, it does. It drops yeah. into this. It's great. I drift into Is Unity some near um, Johns Creek? Uh, there's one near Johns Creek called Unity Atlanta. The one I'm at is Unity North on uh, Sandy Plains in Marietta. Okay. Pretty big church. We just opened back up, letting people it's back like in. A, it's like a new age type church. My girl and I just went yeah, there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's open to most we any did. interpretation. Very Sufi, very Buddhist. Um, yeah, we did, we did Reiki in the church. Yeah. And then Crazy. they were talking about their third eye and all this other stuff. Like, in Christ's third eye. And I was like... Yeah. I fuck with this place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the place I walked into, and now I run a ministry there. But the first time I walked in was to see Deepak Chopra speaking. And uh, he was doing a live thing, and then Wayne Dyer spoke there. And I was like... Both those well, guys are awesome. Yeah, I was like, what is this place? Why would these people come to this place? Let me look into it. And the more I found out about Unity, the more I liked it. And it is the place I walked into and there was a picture of Jesus laughing on the counter when I walked wow. in. I was like, okay, I like yeah, this place already. Yeah. Jesus is just oh. to the cross every yeah, time And he's like, is that the image you chose? Are and you kidding they me? they say that any cross shown without Jesus nailed to it, you're neglecting the... Craziness. The whole story of, you know... I had grand visions of Jesus on many journeys I took and uh, he was laughing, dancing, joking, loving, kissing, holding... Holding his buddies and going, yeah, let's just let's just dance around the fire. He that sounds way more realistic time. to the, yeah. the yeah. guy that gave the stories. Yeah. Yeah. Versus, yeah. You know what I mean? It's a lot more consistent. And at the end, they hung him from a cross. And like, really, that's that's what you went with, right? You just <laughs> held on to that one. When, yeah. when, when, when human Damn beings, it. when human beings betrayed him, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Damn it. Yeah, they just focus on the resurrection yeah. from that. They don't even yeah. focus on the resurrection. They just focus on the cross. Yeah, the resurrection's <laughs> once here, Easter. That's it. Crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and how that how bunnies get involved with that? I don't know. Um, at, at Unity <laughs> Church, they they had this pastor uh, Lawrence in there, and he was talking about why how it started, why yeah. Easter is in the spring, even though realistically he was uh, crucified in the fall. Yeah, because they were talking about how the fig tree had no figs, or and he was like there would be figs or olives in the spring, so it had to be in the fall or winter. Yeah, but because Crazy, the con because yeah. the Council of Nicaea again, they wanted to make it widespread. So how do you do that? You combine it with. Um, hey, you know. With the pagan holiday Estella in spring, nice. and rabbits are for fertility and rebirth. And then why December twenty fifth? Um, again, pagan holidays. And realistically, I, I think they said that he was probably. I forget. He pointed to another thing in the Bible. Where it was like realistically, he was probably born actually like in the spring. They reversed right. the two, right? Um, like spring or summer. And they actually reversed the two, just to make it more palatable for. For the common, you know, yeah. person from pagan roots at that time, Craziness. it's almost like they're using it for power. They are it's using the religion, yes. yeah. for dominance. Yeah, well, that, that's to the manipulate yeah. the uh, masses. Yeah. And in those days, really, it's how they did it because there was no press. It was yeah, you had that, to unify yeah, people you, somehow. You were taught by the church. I remember I wrote a poem once called "Sole Proprietorship" about my Catholic experience and how I came about to where I am now. But part of that was that, you know, the Catholic Church really was adamant about no questions and this is the way it is and I was a troublemaker because I said well I got a question I'm sorry you can't question that that's ridiculous right that was my first glimpse of like hey I'm not sure about this because I'd like to ask a question no no if you remember you my can't yeah <laughs> that's, my, that's crazy in my my poem that that's where I was like pointing the out of the cave it was like, yeah you know, I'm supposed to believe that Satan gave me knowledge through the fruit that I ate, and that's the one that I'm supposed to hate. Yeah. And like the other one's telling me to give up my sons and daughters without piece. question. What the fuck is the lesson? Yeah. Like, that that was always the weird thing. I was like, wait a minute. So, knowledge is bad, and asking questions is wrong. Are you sure you're the good guy? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> that doesn't sound like exactly. what the good guy would say. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and then again, the Gnostics would say essentially the bad guy got a hold of the message and tried to bastardize it. Yes. The, me the message in the Christ consciousness is the point. Christ consciousness is very important. I think that is it. And in Christ, but people will confuse it with Christ is not a person. His name wasn't Jesus Christ. <laughs> right, right. You know, it wasn't his last name. 
Christ consciousness is a vibe, is a feeling that Jesus represented. Exactly. So we all have that ability, just like you said, you will do these things and more. I, I'm a firm believer in that. And I think at the end of Altered States, he says, uh, you know, the final truth is that there is no truth. Right. And that's probably the most truthful statement I've ever heard. It's like, I don't know what I believe is truth now. It could very well change in the next instant when I walk outside, and it could definitely change tomorrow. But I'm open. My favorite word is open. It re represents to me omnipotent power and Embracing now. If I'm open to the moment, open, really open, then my truth could change with the next breath because somebody shows me something and I go, oh, okay, I'm open to change my truth because I wasn't absolutely sure about the truth I had grasped onto, but it felt yeah, like truth. That's but a good point. now I've been shown something that says, maybe that isn't truth. Maybe <laughs> this is. I go, okay, right. I'm okay with that. Well, because you're not in uncertainty. Your, your whole thing is you're not in certainty. You're like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I like <laughs> Which that. Which is cool. I do too. Yeah. Um, and for those of you guys that are listening, um, I know I've referenced a lot of books that have been taken out of the Council of Nicaea where Mike is talking about where they're saying that you can do that what Jesus does and more. That's Matthew chapter 10. The entire chapter, he's sending the, the disciples out nice. to, um, well, I literally like, I memorize these because when I speak to friends or, sure. or other people, it'll be like, where, how do you know that? I'm like, this is the Bible, like, what verse? I'm like, all right, so now I got to memorize this. So, but Ma Matthew chapter 10, he literally tells all the disciples out, um, and he's like, you guys will do what I do and, and more. Um, you can raise people from the dead. You can raise them from the sick. And he, he teaches them the words to say, right? And every time Jesus, when he stops the storm, it's through a word. He always rebukes and does it with a word, which to me, again, I look at the Bible as like a magic book to unlock our Christ consciousness. To me, if he's doing it with a word, that's like, that's like a magic yeah. like spell right like yeah i mean the power of prayer right if you take away somebody's religion and you just said that they're making the sign of a, a sacrifice and they get on their knees and they repeat ritualistically asking for things that sounds like fucking magic yeah, it does. <laughs> that you know you dress as druids and you say have flesh and blood that sounds like magic right like they're we we don't call it that because we're familiar with it right but that it, that it doesn't really mean it's not magic. magic. It's <laughs> spell. That's just something I tell you. That's why it's called spelling. Right, right. Any word you spell out, you're casting a spell. That made sense to me. So I'm like, oh, oh that's wow. just sounds. Yeah. The, one of the things Jesus wrote it out, it's a spell. Of course. It's one magic. The, one thing Jesus was <laughs> famous for, magic. 100%. One of the things Jesus was famous for was reading miracles. Well, the term miracle was created after Jesus. So the actual word miracle is a Hebrew word for reading omens. Which he'll nice. tell you when we go yeah. on walks, what I'm really good nice. at is reading the synchronicities or omens. Yes. Yes. And that's where my magic or my my coherence comes from. Yeah, it's about perception. If I Can I see all the different layers that are bringing this moment together? And that's a beautiful amount of synchronicity. I think one of the things I say, um, it's from uh, an experiential interpretation of the Lord's Prayer, which I was brought up with the Catholic <coughs> Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, immediately a male figure set outside of us. Not how it started. The, the one I... The quote from it's it's I think I say uh, do not let me lose myself in true forgetfulness but wholly release me from the errors of my perception that comes from the Lord's prayer as if uh, you'd have been there that day when and you got to figure some guys are hanging out with Jesus going like Jesus could you just give us a prayer what's a good prayer and he would have spoke something along those lines right. uh, one absolute eternal uh, truth which we all are born forth from not immediately our father art in heaven that got bastardized same thing council and i see it like we're going to make this male figure outside of us they have to go fine you don't have it you got we got it you got to come to the church to get it no you do not well in the it's book within you in the book of genesis god is duality until um i think like the third chapter god speaks it he made we made man in our image yes yeah everything is our yes you know so it there is like a male masculine type and then it gets ignored after that. But initially, well, I mean, there's also multiple gods in the Old Testament, right? Yahweh is different than Jehovah. Yeah. <laughs> like the, yeah we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't acknowledge that. Yeah. Hmm. There's um, I they were all the same. One, one of the gods in like Haka, Haka, Haka I don't know how to pronounce it. It's, it's H-A- Hunaku? H-A-K-U-B. I just screenshot it the other day. But he's talking about, you know, how God has horns. And all these things, I was like, "That sounds like the devil to me." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. But again, like the devil could be perspective. Not, I'm, I'm not a devil worshiper, to be clear. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, unless he's cool. 
Am I gonna take a sniff of that and go there? <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. No, no, that's why I'm you like, took I'm like, it out of like context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, took it out of context. So, but but that's, um, but it's just. He's an acid freak who believes in the devil. No, no, that's not any of it. <laughs> that's only partially true. That's only partially true. Yeah. <laughs> totally yeah. out of context. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> that's probably a good way to end it. <laughs> um, I, I want to thank, you know. Yeah, that's I, all you get from the show? Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what's cool is we're going to head back to, uh, to our office. Uh, I'm going to do interviews in 30 minutes. And uh, Mike's going to check out our office and figure nice. out if he's going to be able to do Thank a good you. fit for it. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so we got to get so going. Much. Time time permits. But um, hopefully all you listening got something out of it, man. Love to have you back on and, and just listen to this. We're, we're, we're going to do that at work. I'm, I'm going to listen to um, this again. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. And what we'll probably do is we'll probably... When I go to sleep. I'm going to ask... <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm going to ask our good friends here at Gwinnett Radio X, Mike and Amanda, if we can have essentially two different versions. This one with the sound and then one... Without, we'll have the whole one. Hey, guys, you know, if you want to get to 45 when we actually talk about it, although I think you'd be missing what we actually did. But if you don't have, you know what I mean? Like, that could be a cool sure. little experiment we sure. do. Love it. Um, thank you, yeah, Mike, Amanda. Thank, thanks for coming to Free Game. And again, guys, as always, free, unrestricted um, game, life, lessons, the journey, vibration, sound. Thank you. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Yeah.